Hello, in this video we're going to take a look at problem 1.6.6s in Broberman. We'll be finding I minus delta, which will be end up being a nominal rate minus a force of interest for two accounts. Here's the problem. It's not really that hard, but uh, I thought it was worth doing because actually it's not written in the best way. And I wanted to illustrate to you, maybe if you do encounter a problem that's not written in the ideal way, you need to make some assumptions about maybe what's going on. Um, it could be that Broberman, which is the book I got this from, uh, copied it wrong from an old exam. I'm not sure, but we'll see that this is written in some ways that are not ideal. You've got two people, Bruce and Peter, with two accounts. They both deposit 100. Bruce's account is credited interest at a nominal rate converted convertible semi-annually, twice per year, and Peter's account is credited interest at a force of interest delta. After seven and a quarter years, the value of each account is 200. Calculate I minus delta. All right, so, you know, how is this not written ideally? Well, the first question that I hope pops into your mind is, what is I? Is I supposed to be the nominal rate that maybe they should have written in there? Nominal rate of I convertible semi-annually, semi which would more typically be written as I2 for a rate that's a nominal rate converted convertible semi-annually, or is I supposed to be the effective annual rate? Another thing kind of funny here is that we're looking at the value after seven and a quarter years. Why did they pick seven and a quarter? It just made it a little confusing because your interest for this for Bruce's account is convertible semi-annually, meaning you really only get interest every six months. But I think for the sake of doing this problem, we will go ahead and assume you get interest continuously though it is convertible semi-annually, so there will be a new amount after seven and a quarter years that would be different than the amount after seven years. So those are the main two things I think that are a little confusing, and, and uh, hopefully you can make those kinds of assumptions that I made and solve the problem, and I did solve the problem, and based on the answer key that I have, it ended up being the right answer and the right approach. All right, so let's separate it here. You've got Bruce and you've got Peter. Uh, what's an expression for the future value of Bruce's account? Um, as a function of time, it's going to be 100 times 1 plus i over 2. i is, yes, this nominal interest rate convertible semi-annually to the 2 times the number of years, 2t if you like. Okay, let's go ahead and plug in the 7 and a quarter years right away. 7.25. This simplifies a bit. I'm just going to simplify the exponent. 2 times 7, 7.25 is going to be 14.5. Set this equal to 200, and we're going to be able to solve that equation for i. With Peter, Peter's account is credited interest at a force of interest delta. That means the future value is this, 100 e to the delta times t. Plug in t equals 7.25. There we have it and set that equal to 200 as well. And now you just solve that for delta, and finally, after solving for both i and delta, just do the, calculate the difference then. So it's not really that hard. Let's take a look at Bruce's equation here. Um, you can cancel the 100 with the 200 to leave a 2. Then you can take the uh, uh, t both sides to the 1 over 14.5 power, so you'll get 2 to the 1 over 14.5 power. You'll then subtract 1 and then multiply by 2. i is going to be 2 times, in parentheses, 2 to the 1 over 14.5 power minus 1. Let's use the calculator now. Uh, what is 1 over 14.5? It is that number right there. Let's store that in register 0. I want to take 2 to that power, 2 raised to that power, which I'm now going to recall from register 0. So this number is representing that thing right there. Subtract 1, multiply by 2, and we get that i is about 0 0.0979. 285, let's say. All right, not too bad. Now solve this equation for delta. Once again, divide both sides by 100. 
Then take the natural log of both sides and divide by 7.25. You'll get delta is natural log of 2 divided by 7.25. That one's a little easier to solve. Uh, let me store i now also here in register 1, let's say. What is delta? Natural log of 2 is this. Divide by 7.25. That's delta. Um, we're doing i minus, I'll, write the, I'll go ahead and write this down even though I don't need to. 0 0.09560065. We're doing i minus delta. So I can just negate this and add what was in register 1, which was the value of i. i minus delta is 0 0.002322, or as a percent, 0.2322 percent, and that is the correct answer. So again, problem itself is not too difficult, but I did need to make some assumptions about what was really meant. Maybe there were some typos in the book, or maybe even typos on the original exam this was taken from. Um, but uh, this was the correct answer, at least according to the answer key that I have, uh, that was a printed answer key.